I'm Jacob, and today I'm going to present our joint work on container confusions in the Linux kernel. So first, let's look at some really simple type confusions. Uh, Computer Science 101, just a quick refresher. We look at some C++ code. So we have a function here, which is called feed elephant, and you pass in the parent class, which is an animal, and then you do the cast uh, to the subclass elephant and do something with it. But now the problem is that afterwards um, you allocate a different subclass, in this case the tiger, and then pass that into the function. So you basically have a type confusion between two different subclasses of the animal parent class. So now you will think like type confusions in C, like we don't have classes, we don't have object-oriented programming, so none of this is an issue, right? And uh, today I'm going to show you that this is actually not the case. So quick teaser, we found uh, 100 previously undiscovered invalid downcast bugs in the Linux kernel. And due to that, the kernel had to upgrade their C standard. So first, we're going to look at some of the background, um, in this case, structure embedding uh, in C. So we look at this uh, for the example of the list head struct which is used prominently in the, in the kernel to implement lists. So we have a struct which has a previous and the next pointer. So um, you can basically join or, or link a list head structs together like that. But that in itself is not really useful because you want to carry actual information for list elements. So what you do uh, to do that is you kind of subclass the list head struct by embedding it in other structs. So in this case, I call the struct my struct, and it embeds the list head to kind of inher inherit the parent class's behavior, and I add another member, in this case, a number, to actually carry the information. So now if we have a pointer to the my struct, uh, in this case s, uh, and we want to go to uh, the list head, kind of to the parent class, we can easily do that uh, in C syntax by uh, using the code snippet below. So in this case, we're basically upcasting to the parent class. So now what if, what if we want to go the other way around? We have a, a pointer to a list head, and we know that it's contained in my struct. So how do we actually go back to the container, basically? And in C, this is not really uh, possible because the source code doesn't carry the information that the list head is actually contained. It's just something the programmer knows. So in code bases like the Linux kernel or QMU, for example, uh, programmers made their own macro uh, called container off. And with that macro, you basically tell it the pointer to the list head. You tell it which struct it is contained in and under which member. So you can basically compute the negative offset it has to do to the pointer uh, to get the outer struct. So we're basically downcasting without any runtime checks, um, and of course nothing can go wrong, right? So we did an analysis of uh, how big kind of the attack surface could be. So we have more than 50,000 occurrences of container off in the Linux kernel with uh, about 4,000 different structure types. So it's uh, definitely large enough to try to make an automated approach to find those bugs. So we present you the uncontained sanitizer, which is our dynamic analysis approach, which kind of tries to find such, such bugs. And luckily, the first talk was already talking about KSAN, address sanitizer, and the red zones. So I'm going to keep this part a bit shorter, uh, because we're going to repurpose the red zones that the address sanitizer uses uh, and puts around objects. So for address sanitizer, those are used to detect, for example, buffer overflows, but we're gonna use those to kind of detect uh, the object boundaries. So if we do a container off, we know which type we're actually casting to, uh, and we know kind of what the memory layout of that should be. So basically, where that object starts uh, and where that object ends. So we can build like a mask, which kind of defines just above that, uh, um, that object, there should be a red zone. Then in the size of that object, there shouldn't be a red zone. And then after the object, there should be red zone again. 
So now we can put that uh, mask on top of our object, and in this case, it matches, so we did a correct cast. So now what if we have, for example, a list head, and we perform the same container of operation on it, but it's actually not contained in anything. So around it, there will be only red zones. So now we use the same mask again, but if we overlay that over our actual memory, we're gonna see it doesn't match, and we can report a fault or a bug. So our workflow uh, is basically, we take the Linux kernel, we instrument it with our LLVM passes to add the sanitizer, and then we use syscaller to do the fuzzing and basically get bugs out of it. So now we're gonna look at a case study where we basically show you one of the bugs we found, uh, and we, have, we see that we have like a bind address, uh, and then we do a container off on it. And you see that we use the bind address address list, and then we use the next uh, element in the list. So the correct behavior here is if the list has entries, then the next pointer will point somewhere else in memory, and it will work. But now if the list is empty, then the next will just point to itself, and we can kind of cut that out of the equation, and we now basically perform a container off uh, on the address list member. So now you can see on the right that we basically uh, go out of bounds because we do a container off for something that is contained in the SCTP bind address struct, but we tell it to be contained in the SCTP SOC address entry. So those two struct types, they don't match, and our tool can basically detect the incorrect cast. Based on our dynamic analysis, uh, we found five different bug patterns that we kind of analyzed. Uh, in this case, we saw basically the empty list confusion, and next I'm gonna talk about the past the end iterator. And for the other three, I refer you to the paper. So for past the end iterator, we will see uh, some list iteration uh, code. So we have um, an iterator variable that is declared in the start of the function, because with the C89, which the kernel was based on, you can't declare any uh, variables inside of for loops. So then we have uh, a list iterator, uh, in this case list for each entry, which iterates uh, over the request list and checks if um, for that element, the request is the request that we're looking for. And in that case, we break out of the loop. And now, basically, the kernel developers are using the same condition uh, after the loop to kind of figure out if actually an element was found or not. Um, and in this case, because if the list didn't, or if the list iterator didn't find the correct uh, element, then the iter variable will basically uh, be type confused and it will do a cast on the request list. So it will go somewhere out of bounds, and now if you do the iter request check in the end, it might use some out of bounds memory or some other fields in other structs. Uh, and either that is by a coincidence what you're actually comparing to, or if it's out of bounds, the attacker could actually um, manipulate that memory into containing the same address and making that check go false, even though you didn't find anything in the list. So what was proposed to kind of fix this uh, is declaring the iter variable uh, inside of the loop by upgrading the C standard so that you can actually declare that variable uh, inside of for loops. And by doing so, you can't use it after the loop anymore and you don't even have the risk of misusing it after. So in this case, you basically just uh, introduce an additional variable, uh, in this case found, and you set that to true if you found it and you use the intentional way of kind of checking, did I find an element or not after the loop? Uh, so based on our five uh, bug patterns, we built uh, static data flow uh, analyzers and discovered an additional uh, 80 bugs for those patterns. Um, in conclusion, type confusions are not only a C++ problem, but container off also introduces them all over the kernel, uh, or similar C code bases that use similar macros. 
So we found uh, automatically more than 100 bugs, although keep in mind not all of them might be exploitable um, because it heavily depends kind of what auto bounds uh, memory is used or um, yeah, what, what resides there. Uh, in total, we submitted uh, more than 150 kernel patches uh, to fix such issues. We got uh, eight CVEs assigned and we, the kernel had to upgrade from C89 to C11. Thank you very much. <laughs>